Hey everyone, in August, Creality released the Ender 3 V3 SE, and mine came in early October, and I wanted to share my experience. Now, there's a lot happening in this video, and the editing was a mess, but I'm going to try to get through it quickly and upload a series of videos getting more into detail. Anyways, let's check it out. The Ender 3 V3 SE is said to be much easier to assemble than previous Enders. Let's see. Bags of parts and tools, sample filament, there's the dual Z rod for the gantry frame, a pretty big upgrade over the previous Ender 3. Alright, here's everything out of the box. The gantry frame is already assembled, looks like all you have to do is attach it to the base. The tools that come with it look about the same as the tools that come with the other models, but there's no bed scraper. Probably because of the magnetic spring steel print surface. Prints generally just pop right off of this thing with a little bending after it cools down. These metal scrapers can scratch the hell out of your surface anyways. This was a surprise. They included one of those declogger rods to push out filament stuck in the hot end. I've been procrastinating buying one of these. Here's the base with two linear shafts to keep the print bed from wobbling, which could be a problem with the other Ender 3 style printers. The gantry frame is attached with bolts from the underside, then a couple on the Z rod bracket. I like the design of the base, but I can't check if the gantry frame is square with this plastic case over the bottom. Maybe I'm just missing something, but let me know in the comments. Next we just plug in the Z stepper motor, put the hot end cable through the back of the gantry to keep it away from active prints, plug it into the hot end assembly and screw this clamp to keep it secure, bolt the LCD onto the side, I'm in the United States so switch the power supply to 110 volts. Now I just power this thing on and check it out. I must admit, I haven't put an automatic bed level device on any of my enders. If I did for one, I'd have to do it for all of them. I've been doing fine with the bed leveler from Chep. This is the second version of the device. I must admit though, making the bed mesh and clipper manually is a pain. The Ender 3 V3 shows the bed variants of each contact point right on the LCD. That's pretty cool. The first print I did was the Chep cube, which is 20 millimeters on each axis. I used the normal stock settings in Creality Print for this. The default speed is set to 180 millimeters a second, with the inner walls at 90 and the outer wall at 60. This is very accurate for not calibrating the filament or anything. Though this is a sample of Creality's own PLA, so it may be pre-calibrated just for this. I ran another test, but upped the speed of everything to 180 millimeters a second. Well, here are the results for the second cube, though this is not as accurate, this is still really good for a budget machine going this fast right out of the box. No axis was more than 0.1 millimeter off. I downloaded this Halloween bobblehead from printables uploaded by 3D Printy. Sliced it using the normal settings, but with three walls and a cubic infill pattern. Estimated to take an hour and 11 minutes, using about 18 grams of filament. It took an hour and 6 minutes to complete. Next was a pair of crow skull earrings, sliced in Creality's high quality setting, which doubles the layer resolution to 0.1mm. I added a raft and supports since these really don't have any spot to adhere to the print surface. And they were done in an hour and 45 minutes. Here is a spiderweb hairpin uploaded to Thingiverse by Kim Prints. The web part printed in 50 minutes. It prints flat, but PLA plastic can be heated up and reshaped, much like when you're forming a mouth guard with your teeth. And that's about all I could print with the 250 gram sample that comes with the printer. Moving on to PETG plastic. I'm going to use this orange from Airy One, which on my other printers I found prints best at just 220 degrees Celsius, though PETG commonly prints more at around 240 degrees. The stock speed settings in Creality Print for PETG is the same as PLA, though PETG typically prints better at a slower speed. I kept the speeds the same though. The cooling fan is set to 50%, though I usually just turn the fan off for this stuff. I printed a set of jack-o'-lantern bobbleheads from 3D Printy. Also this jack-o'-lantern pineapple. And a Mira Mira no Mi Devil Fruit. They all came out pretty decent, except for Going at the speed, the overhangs didn't really do very well. There are still a lot of print settings I could play with to fix this. 
maybe in a future video because right now I'm going over to TPU from Overture, a flexible filament, almost rubbery. A lot of extruders have trouble pushing this stuff. It is recommended to print really slow with TPU. Sometimes this can happen, for example, it got tangled in and all over the inside of my CR10V3's extruder once, which is a real pain. To try this out on the V3SE, I'm printing these stamp faces to be glued onto handles. I can already tell it's going to be pretty stringy, and yes, these are quite stringy. This temperature tower showed it's just as stringy in my ideal temperature range. The retraction test shows that a retraction of 1 millimeter seems to stop the stringing. While editing this video, I saw Chep put up a video about printing TPU on the Ender 3 V3SE. He determined the retraction distance should be 7 millimeters, so I'll have to try that next time I print TPU in this thing. Anyways, yeah, 1 millimeter still left lots of strings all over this spider that I printed. Now I put the V3 next to the original Ender 3. I wanted to compare print speeds between them using the stock profiles created for them in Creality Print. For this, I loaded up both printers with the same white PLA from Elegoo. Both printers will be printing this articulated robot uploaded by BQ Education. The V3 SE speed is set to 180 millimeters per second, running in fill lines at 180, outer walls at 60, inner walls at 90, and the top bottom skin at 50. The original Ender is set to run everything at 30 millimeters per second, though this printer can potentially print decently up to 60 millimeters a second. The biggest difference though is the acceleration set for these profiles. The Ender is accelerating the print head at 500 millimeters a second squared, and the V3 SE is set to 5000. The V3 finished in 1 hour and 40 minutes, then waited around while the original Ender finished at 4 hours and 13 minutes. They both articulated right away. The V3's robot seems to hide the layer lines better. I see areas that look like under extrusion was an issue. Both models showed the Z seem pretty bad. The older Ender has more ghosting and didn't handle the steep overhangs very well. Next, they printed these Minecraft skeleton kit cards from Chiz. The V3 finished at 36 minutes, and the V1 at 1 hour and 7 minutes. The V3 looks to have been over extruding a bit, the top surfaces are a bit rough, and the V1 looks to have been under extruding, showing gaps on the top surface. This also shows while I was putting the pieces together, the V3 parts were too thick to put together, and the V1s were loose but could be glued. This is Bowser from Super Mario, uploaded by Desk Drawer. A friend of mine wanted a large Bowser head printed. This model comes with him in separate pieces, but I only need the head. I was going to print this on my modified Ender 3 V2 with the bigger nozzle and thicker layers, which would have taken over 24 hours, but I sliced it up for the new Ender, slowed the speeds down just a little bit, and it was finished printing in 16 hours using the normal quality profile. Now that's really fast for a $200 3D printer though it did have some failure areas, like a bit of his top molars weren't supported enough, a tip of his eyebrow didn't quite make it, and the supported surfaces on the bottom are really rough. Angus from Maker's Muse just uploaded a video recently about making better support structures, it's worth checking out. Anyways, most of the flaws are going to be up against the wall, so I think the head still looks pretty awesome. I can't wait to see how it looks after my friend paints it. You can find a link to his Instagram down in the description. Now let's go over some of the issues that I've had with this printer and that other people on Reddit have shown. A lot of people on Reddit are having trouble updating the firmware. It didn't work for me the first couple times either. The process was going to be in this video, but I'll probably make a separate video all about that. But basically, reformat the SD card, make sure that it's set to FAT32 with an allocation size of 4096 bytes. And like this Reddit user suggested, rename their firmware bin file to something shorter, but keep the .bin on the end. All of the enders seem to have trouble with really long file names, but that's what fixed it for me. I noticed that the gantry frame is pretty wobbly. This is especially noticeable while printing, with the higher speeds and the heavy spool on the top. This wobbling will show up on the prints, and I assume that's why some of my prints aren't quite as good as I expected them to be. I'm hoping to find a simple solution for this, if not just re-tap the bolt threads. 
Or the easy solution, uh, contact Creality and ask for a replacement. I would definitely like to get more into the speed comparison tests once the frame is more solid. Next, while printing the Mira Mira Double Fruit, I heard some clicking, the noise the extruder makes when it can't push plastic through the nozzle. I thought maybe it was having trouble printing PETG this fast, so I slowed the printer down a little bit, and it seemed to work until I come back and find it not extruding anything as the printer continued following the G-code. Now this would mean the extruder is clogged, only it wasn't really clogged. I was immediately able to push the PETG through with just my hand. I assume the stepper maybe overheated and gave up. I'll have to try to replicate this error again and figure it out. Well, this video was kind of a mess, but I'm going to be uploading more about the V3SE on more specific topics. I simply wanted to compare this new entry-level printer with the original, but it got way more complex than I thought it would be while editing the video. My plan was to break this down into a series of videos going over things like fixing the wobbly gantry frame, exploring different print settings at high speeds, comparing Creality Print with Cura, installing Clipper on the Ender 3 V3SE, and test out different nozzle sizes. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. I'll see you all next time.